Greetings, ladies, gentlemen, and folks. And today I'm going to be telling you about some of the causes that led up to the Civil War. These causes will include John Brown, Harriet Tubman, and the Underground Railroad, the Lincoln-Douglas debates, and the Compromise of 1850. The first topic we'll be talking about is Harriet Tubman and the Underground Railroad. Harriet Tubman was born into slavery in around the year 1825. She's never actually sure the exact date of when she was born as it was never documented and she uh, just didn't really know so that was her best guess that she had. As a child working on the plantations, she suffered a serious injury one day that gave her random headaches and epilepsy for the rest of her life. Harriet Tubman eventually escaped slavery in 1849 and changed her name from Armento Ross to Harriet Tubman in order for it to be harder for people to track her. She used the Underground Railroad to escape and succeeded and was free now. Harriet Tubman then decided after she escaped to join the people who were a part of the Underground Railroad who consisted of free blacks, whites, and Christian abolitionists who helped slaves escape into the North. Harriet Tubman believed it was her mission from God to help more slaves escape into the North. Harriet Tubman would help and rescue many slaves in the following years, becoming one of the main abolitionists of a part of the Underground Railroad. She would develop trails to help slaves escape and also create secret codes for other people in order to communicate. Her becoming a famous conductor of the Underground Railroad gave her the nickname Moses. She freed up to 300 slaves as her time as a conductor. When the Fugitive Slave Act was passed, it caused a lot of problems for Harriet Tubman, as she was now branded a fugitive and a bounty was placed on her head. There were also other ways she helped contribute to the end of slavery, as speaking out against it in speeches, and even helping the North defeat the South by helping them give strategies of how to beat them. Her helping to free slaves through the Underground Railroad greatly contributed to the Civil War, as it created even more tension between the North and South. Later on in her life, Harriet would go on to support women's rights and the suffrage movement. The Compromise of 1850 happened a little after the gold rush in the Mexican War, as America was gaining even more land in the West, getting even bigger and bigger. The North and South would struggle greatly with each other during this time, as both were trying to decide which new states would be slave states or free states. This would cause even more tension to build between the North and the South, as the South wanted more slave states to sp spread slavery, and the North wanted more free states to stop the spread of slavery. All of this happening between the North and the South would create even more conflict between both of them creating even more tension building up to the Civil War. The Compromise of 1850 was supposed to help with these problems and solve them for the North and the South, and help them decide which states would be slave, which states would be free, but it, it, it kind of did the exact opposite. The Compromise of 1850 included five separate bills, one being the admission of California as a state and it being free. Another bill was introduced in this compromise, which would help organize the Southwest ter Territories, including states like Utah and New Mexico. They were organized without the talk of slavery, and slavery did not impact how they would be placed. The third bill that was created in this compromise would help adjust the borders between Texas and New Mexico. The fourth bill that was introduced in this compromise was about the elimination of slave trade in the District of Columbia. The fifth and final bill that was introduced in this compromise was the Fugitive Slave Act, which said that all slaves had to be returned to their owners, even if they were in a free state or if they were now a free person. This caused much anger and frustration to the people of America, especially the North. This compromise nowadays isn't really seen as a, a compromise because it uh, only worked for a few years and eventually it broke apart um, like, like that and with the South seceding from the Union and the start of the Civil War. Our third topic we will be talking about today is John Brown and the Raid of Harper's Ferry. After he left school, he became very interested in the abolition movement. Two years later, after the death of his first wife, Deontay Lusk, John Brown would marry Marianne Day. Around this time, John Brown would have a conversation with Frederick Douglass about the issue of slavery, which would impact John Brown to a greater calling. Death of Elijah Parrish Lovejoy 
who was shot and killed by a pro-slavery mob, would inspire John Brown to join the abolitionist movement, inspiring him to want to end slavery in any way he could, even through violence. Brown would play a big part in helping slaves escape from the South using the Underground Railroad. Because of Brown's methods and his willingness to kill people, he would kill many people in the year 1856 who were pro-slavery and supported slavery. This is a quote from Brown about his thoughts about slavery and how it should end. I'm quite certain that the crimes of this guilty land will never be purged away but with blood. I had as now, I think vainly, flattered myself that without very much bloodshed it might be done. John Brown would participate in the event called Bleeding Kansas and lead anti-slavery fighters in Kansas. Brown would go under the name of Isaac Smith to try and recruit more people to his cause. On October 26, 1859, Brown would lead 18 of his men in a raid against Harper's Ferry Armory. Three of those men would include his own sons. Brown's plan was to give muskets to slaves to use against local plantation owners. Brown's plan was to end slavery in each county in Virginia one at a time. The raid succeeded and they took hostages from local farms. They captured the armory, but soon locals from the town started attacking John and, John and his men, something he did not expect to happen. The Marines soon came and surrounded Brown's men. They used a battering ram to knock down the door John and his men were behind of. Both sides fought for three minutes. Brown's men would be able to kill four of the Marines and injure nine of the Marines. However, Brown's men would lose this encounter in the end. Many days later, Brown, Brown would be tried in court and hanged for treason. This event would cause the South to create militias in order to stop slavery revolts, which the North did not like whatsoever. This would cause even more tension to build up between the North and the South, creating even more conflict between them that would eventually lead to the Civil War. Our fourth and final event we'll be talking about today are the Lincoln and Douglas debates, which were debates between Lincoln and Douglas. Abraham Lincoln and Stephen Douglas were political rivals, but at one point, they were almost allies. Stephen Douglas was in a feud between James Buchanan, who was the current Democratic president at the time. They were arguing over what, they should, be, what should be done about the crisis in Kansas, also known as Bleeding Kansas. Douglas and Buchanan were arguing over something called the Lecompton Constitution, which came around by the end of 1857. It was a criminally dissenting pro-slavery document that confirmed the spread of slavery in the Kansas. While this was happening, the Republican Party thought they could try to get Stephen Douglas to join them with the whole argument he was having with Buchanan at the time and because of the chaos in Kansas. Lincoln and his allies didn't like Stephen Douglas at all. They despised him. They didn't want him to join the Republican Party. So they all came together to vo vote Abraham Lincoln as their candidate for the U.S. Senate. Lincoln would, later on, propose to Douglas to have joint discussions, up to 50 of them. However, Douglas only agreed to do seven. Yeah, I, I did. The opening speaker would have an hour to talk, and the second speaker would come and have an hour and a half to talk. The first speaker would then come back for half an hour to have a rebuttal over what the second speaker said before them. They would have these discussions across different congressional districts across the state of Illinois, as both of them were from there. During the debates, Lincoln would argue that eventually in the future, all the states in America would either all be free or all be slave. This showed evidence of how slavery is already spreading into the North by citing the end of the Missouri Compromise and the Dred Scott decision. This is an exact quote of Lincoln's feelings on the matter. A house divided against itself cannot stand. I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. I do not expect the union to be dissolved. I do not expect the house to fall, but I do expect it will cease to be divided. It will become all of one thing or all of the other. Many people would come to these debates and try to listen to them as they were very interesting and super intriguing. This would help more people realize that the country cannot stay divided forever and that this division cannot last and won't be able to last this long. This would ultimately lead to the Civil War happening. Lincoln would have the debates published the following year, which would greatly help him become the Republican candidate for president in the year 1860. Once he was elected president, this caused the South to secede from the Union, ultimately leading to the Civil War. The reason the South seceded from the Union is because they feared that Lincoln would take away their slaves from them. The Southern states seceding would ultimately lead to the Civil War, as now the North and South were separated. Thank you all for watching this video. I shall see you folks later. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.